It's my pleasure to welcome you in the Industry Hub for the debate about this region, about Visegrad region, which is Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary and Poland. Each year we are focusing on this region, always from different perspective. We had like representatives of film funds, national film funds or film archives from the four countries or film universities. And we always discuss what is going on in this region. What, is it diverse? Is it homo homogenic? Uh, as an introduction to Central Europe. I'm very happy that this year we will look from the perspective of uh, leading film journalists from the four uh, Visegrad countries. So I have a pleasure to introduce to you Ola Salva from Poland, welcome. Loran Stor from Hungary, welcome. Uh, Pavel Slatki from the Czech Republic and Martin Kudlac from Slovakia. And your moderator will be Carmen Gray. Thank you for joining us. Carmen is from New Zealand, based in Berlin, so not from this region, and we wanted to ask you to be curious. So thank you again for accepting this invitation, and the floor is yours. I give floor to you, Carmen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And yes, thank you, everyone, again, for being here. Um, so this um, conversation today, I think, will be quite like informal and chatty. Um, but I mean, just to start off with, maybe if you could all just say a little bit about the respective countries you're working in, in terms of the documentary landscape. So how much do you think documentary is supported there by audiences and by funders? Is it considered, you know, like an important um, film form there, um, would you say? Okay, if I may start, then uh, uh, Czech Republic produces around 60 to 70 feature films each uh, year, and at least one third uh, are documentaries uh, every year. Um, the support, like in terms of audience and box office, is uh, very selective uh, for documentaries. Audience, I would say, focuses uh, more on like portrait documentaries about famous uh, people. That's uh, one of the main topics that could lead to uh, better uh, box office results in this country, I would say. Otherwise, um, uh, even though uh, the financial situation of financing Czech films as the system, the whole system, uh, is a bit shattered uh, now, even though this year, I would say, is uh, very good in terms of quality and uh, quantity as, as well. So uh, there are like certain uh, darker perspectives uh, regarding the current situation, but so far so good with Czech cinema, if I may say so. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm from Poland and uh, pretty much we have the same production capacity uh, and the same ratio uh, of uh, fiction films and non-fiction films. And uh, I uh, checked, um, so to speak, uh, the how, how much money annually Polish Film Institute has reserved for uh, documentary production support. Production is different. Um, program then uh, documentary development and it's 3 million euro for production and 250 Carmen help me out with English 250,000 is like quarter of million quarter million for development and uh, the budget budgets can vary from 50,000 Euro to even um, as high as uh, to 2,500,000 um, euro. Sometimes uh, these projects are international co-productions or probably intended as mini-series, documentary mini-series. And um, uh, this year already uh, 38 films were applying for support, for production support. and. Uh, 16 got uh, funded um, for overall um, amount of 1 million euro. I know it sounds a little bit boring, uh, but I understand that uh, numbers are might be interested interesting for some producers who are interested in working 
uh, with uh, with the Polish market. I know the Czechs are um, competing with us for international projects. Um, and um, I know that Poland is a very open country for working within the region and outside of the region. Uh, during recent Krakow Film Festival, there was special focus on Czechs, Czech cinematography and um, I'm sorry, uh, Czech in film industry, and it was uh, the collaboration also between Polish uh, Filmmakers Association and Audiovisual Producers Associations from uh, Czechia. Th is, this, is this how we should refer to country? Czech Republic or Czechia? Both, okay. So um, as, um, as for the um, regular release, there are 15, 14, 15 films per year, documentaries uh, in regular distribution. Uh, majority of these films uh, are local productions. And as we speak, the most popular film uh, is actually a documentary about a famous actress. So um, definitely there's a, another thing we have in common with the Czech market. And uh, audience loves nonfiction films. They love nonfiction books. This is the most uh, popular genre in literature in Poland. And um, that the, this is um, very clear when you go to a Polish documentary film festival. There are two major events, Krakow Film Festival, in obviously Krakow, and uh, Millennium Dogs Against Gravity that was uh, initi initially only in Warsaw, but now is uh, traveling and have has, I think, seven or eight editions in different uh, cities. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of interest in uh, documentary films. And uh, I know that Polish documentaries are very successful. They travel around the festivals. And I think in Locarno, we, uh, Polish film... Um, well, actually, it was an international co-production. Ham Hamlet Syndrome uh, won uh, Semaine de la Critique and uh, other film Fledglings by Lydia Duda, who won um, yesterday an award, uh, got, uh, I think, special mention. So overall, uh, there's a, a lot of money in the, um, to... Um, in the, in the public sector, there's also uh, regional film funds. Uh, what is not um, good uh, for documentary filmmakers is that because of the political situation, uh, some topics are not accepted by the Polish Film Institute. And I know f from different producers uh, that uh, they avoid some keywords uh, for applying for grants. And uh, this is not official sy systemic, systematic um, censorship. It's the worst kind. It's self-censorship. And... Um, Can I ask what kind of words or what kind of themes are particularly... Um, I, would, I would guess abortion would be one of them because, uh, as you probably know, abortion is, uh, uh, is uh, banned uh, right now in Poland. Um, there are some films uh, about LGBTQ um, plus communities, uh, and uh, they uh, they were very popular with the audience. But in general, there there's a strong feeling that political documentaries should not be uh, made right now. Okay, thank you. So for Slovakia, I would say the situation is pretty much the same as in Czech Republic and Poland. Obviously, the numbers are smaller because of the country is five, five and a half million people. So that's also has an impact on the funds. Exactly the same pattern, uh, blockbuster documentaries about famous people which are running in multiplex cinemas. Uh, there is like this branch of independent uh, documentary filmmaking which is quite strong on alternative platforms or VOD platforms and uh, also traveling the film festival circuit and they are also quite successful I would say. Regarding the situation, there used to be times when there was more documentaries made because of the low budget requirements, but also the parity is more or less, you know, 50 to 50. And uh, support is still in there. There is like uh, one uh, funding body, it's central, audiovisual fund, then there are some regional funds, filmmaker can apply. 
There was a strong tradition of working within the country and in collaboration with the Czech Republic because of the shared history, but the younger and middle generation, I would say, since some time, they uh, started to apply for funds, European funds, creative media, so they were also quite successful and this helped boost uh, the productions and collaborations. I wouldn't speak about, you know, like censorship. I'm not sure there is like open explicit censorship like in Poland. Obviously there are some hot button issues, but this is the case with documentary uh, filmmaking. Uh, they happen to foreshadow certain topics. You know, the far leaning was written on the wall um, several years ago, so this topic got covered and were quite prophetical in a worse kind of sense. So I know also regarding LGBTQ is not that much popular, but there is, I mean, at least one documentary in the working, and it can be, you know, quite pioneering, hopefully. It's also by a young uh, filmmaker. And what is like a quite interesting uh, trend currently in the country is the emergence of uh, the new generation of female filmmakers which like the debuts uh, this year, last year, and also quite popular on the festival circuit, so the hopes are high, I would say. And uh, what is so like a specific is also public broadcaster has a strong position in supporting the documentaries and also broadcasting them, obviously. I would say most of the documentaries shown on the festival circuit were supported by the public pop broadcaster. And uh, I would say also the alternative distribution in, uh, you know, like small theaters or at school is also getting some direction for the underrepresented documentaries. Okay. Uh, listen to you. I'm afraid uh, the situation is the worst in Hungary compared to other Visegrad uh, uh, countries. Because uh, uh, because the sense of censorship uh, uh, is practiced by filmmakers since uh, actually 2012 or something like this, so so many many uh, older uh, filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, or filmmakers who who made uh, uh, documentaries frequently uh, decided not to apply for film fund, uh, film foundation, uh, state, uh, state money, or apply for projects uh, which uh, don't really um, criticize uh, the social um, situation in Hungary, or the social problems in Hungary. And uh, actually, it's uh, quite difficult to uh, explain uh, the Hungarian Film Foundation system because uh, there are three uh, different uh, stories uh, or th three dif different uh, uh, way to get uh, money from the National Film uh, Institute. It's the name of uh, of this uh, uh, film foundation now because uh, there were many changes. I always forget the names. I, I, okay, I, I make uh, some jokes, but uh, but it's not easy to to follow uh, the new newer and newer directions in uh, Hungarian Film Foundation. But now National Film Institute uh, gives the money uh, to to filmmakers, and uh, there is uh, 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 there is money or f found uh, for theatrical uh, production, so so films uh, uh, made for uh, cinema di distribution, and uh, these projects uh, receive uh, more money. Uh, I try to uh, uh, give you numbers as well. So uh, twenty from twenty thousand euro till six hundred. Uh, thousand euros, uh, and there are some some rare, uh, high, really high production values uh, uh, documentaries. Uh, for example, Kotinka, uh, Iron Lady, uh, uh, received one million, uh, almost one and a half million euros uh, for the production. So if you compare, it, so it begins uh, with uh, uh, what I said before, uh, 
20,000 euros, and, and, the, and, the, and the top category, uh, of course, the politically, uh, um, politically uh, in a way, a PR, a PR movie, you could say, about uh, 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 famous Hungarian uh, sportsmen or sportswomen. Uh, they can get a lot of money uh, if you compare to other projects. And, uh, and there are some other uh, um, more independent uh, movies which can get only uh, 20,000 uh, euros. And, uh, uh, and uh, there is, uh, I think, only three, four, five uh, projects uh, uh, can receive uh, money from this, uh, from free, 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 uh, free uh, theatrical production, free theatrical screening production. And uh, there is another way to get money for making documentaries, uh, television documentaries. And uh, there are many more television documentaries uh, uh, supported by the state, 30, 40 annually. And they get, uh, of course, uh, lower uh, budget, lower uh, uh, support from the state. Uh, 10,000 euros, uh, uh, from 10,000 euros, uh, till uh, 75,000 euros. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. so mentioning so. a little bit this like censorship, whether it's self-censorship or censorship from the state, um, if uh, a filmmaker wants to make a more, commer a more controversial film, are there other avenues to do it in terms of like independent funding or things like that? Um, is there much of that happening outside of the state structure or it's very difficult uh, to go down that route? When you say uh, independent funding, what exactly do you mean? Like private money? Yeah, private money or maybe, yeah, and co-production, any kind of other sources. <laughs> but private money especially. Or maybe people making, you know, like very low budget DIY things, would they have any chance to be seen, for example? In the Czech Republic, I don't see uh, really a problem with this self-censorship or state censorship, luckily, very lucky about it, that we don't have to deal with this. Uh, with like private money going into documentaries, there are uh, several uh, like private media investing also in documentary uh, subjects, uh, like especially TV's Nova and Prima, which are like the main uh, private-owned uh, broadcasters. And they also tend to uh, focus on, let's say, controversial or famous uh, figures or events from recent uh, Czech uh, history. But that's not to say we are dealing with uh, some kind of censorship. Uh, I, I don't feel uh, like problematic uh, uh, topics being somehow mm, like put aside or so to say so. So we don't have to deal with this luckily. Um, I will be speculating a bit because um, my my major focus is uh, feature film production. Um, I would say that, and I'm sorry to, I'm, I'm gonna apologize uh, just in case to every Polish uh, documentary film director if I'm wrong, but I feel in general that Polish filmmakers are not that interested in talking about political or social issues. There are some, uh, but uh, apart from maybe this one documentary that uh, was shown, I think, three years ago in Krakow, my country so beautiful about extreme uh, right wing uh, side of the political um, spectrum. I don't really uh, can think about any documentary that would be tackling these issues. I know there, is a, there, there was a project about uh, women's strike, when, um, about the, the, the these um, events, but I'm not sure how they are getting their funds. Definitely, there is um, crowdfunding. Uh, that's that's a that's a way to do that. But it seems to me like uh, also in um, during communism, 
when filmmakers had to use a lot of metaphors, they were um, getting that sort of artistic uh, way of saying about uh, about you know that they were trying to be more poetic uh, about the issues they were concerning. They were more talking more about morals and ethics than something that is actually happening here and now. As I mentioned earlier, I, w I wouldn't say like uh, explicit censorship. There are some tacky topics as well. And when I think back, the most of the controversies were when people depicted in the documentary find out what was used in the material, and then they like protested, and this like created the whole debate. And some movies were withdrawn or and leaked <laughs> illegally afterwards, but this didn't re relate to like state censorship. And regarding the alternative funding, there is, you know, the few choices, I would say, the audiovisual fund remains the main and crucial source of support. There is obviously the crowdfunding option, but as I would say as a last mile or last resort, really, also private money are possible. You have sponsors and donors, so producers can go and ask companies or private channels, but that can also be a bit, you know, slippery slope sometimes, so. I can say the same, uh, but uh, don't forget that, uh, that HBO Europe uh, uh, was a very important uh, uh, production company in a way, I mean, this uh, uh, private channel, uh, and, uh, and it supported uh, many, not so many, but uh, many good, many, many important Hungarian documentaries uh, uh, in the 2010. Um, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, HBO uh, decided to finish uh, supporting uh, uh, European productions, and it will be the end of, uh, of in a way, independent uh, production in, in Hungary. So, so many, many important issues were made uh, during the last years, uh, supported by the HBO. For example, stories of my mothers, uh, about uh, two lesbian mothers of a, of, a, of a child, and it was one of the most important uh, documentary in the last years in Hungary. And um, I, I don't remember if, we, if they, if they uh, got any state support. I, I'm sure they got some money, but they could improve their project by the support of HBO and, uh, and, and the co-productions. So without any state support, there is no chance to start, to kick off uh, 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 the project of the filmmakers, the documentary filmmakers. So that's the problem. And, uh, and now I'm afraid if we look at the, uh, at the numbers and the, and the supported projects, I can't see any, any, uh, any documentary project on social issues in Hungary. No, there is no, uh, uh, any, any, any uh, documentaries, uh, um, about I don't know uh, poverty or uh, or, <laughs> or uh, gender issues. No, we can see only project projects about uh, famous Hungarian um, persons, historical uh, um, persons, or cultural uh, events. Uh, or uh, I, I can say uh, that, um, they can make my, my documentary filmmakers can make uh, uh, movies about uh, religion and prominent figures in, in Hungarian history, and so on. So th th that's the way how the sales and censorship works. Uh, there is no way to get money for socialists. Then, uh, okay, I make a movie, I, I, I make a, a documentary about a famous uh, Hungarian musician, because at least I can, I can live on, <laughs> I can survive. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, and also, I mean, you're all working as journalists. It would be interesting to know as well um, when you're writing for publications, I mean, how much space is there to talk about film, be it like fiction or documentary from your own country and region? Do you feel like everything is kind of becoming dominated by, I don't know, like Netflix or global blockbusters, this kind of thing? Um, if you could talk a little bit about that. 
I just wanted to add maybe that uh, Polish film on uh, the protest, anti-government protests opened this year, uh, One World uh, Film Festival here in the Czech Republic. That was uh, like one of the events relating to what we were uh, discussing uh, recently in, here in Jihlava uh, two years ago. Uh, there was a film on uh, life in Hungary and um, kind of institutional changes and so on, which uh, got uh, a lot of attention. Uh, so uh, there are uh, Czech filmmakers uh, trying to cover these topics we are discussing uh, also, or supporting, let's say, Polish filmmakers on some topics that are really like unpopular uh, for the state financiers uh, to say so. And um, regarding your question, um, there is a clear uh, aspect of um, of an interest on writing on like these huge or global uh, audiovisual events. So you can't miss Marvel movies or you can't miss a certain like blockbusters and, and so on. Uh, but I do work a lot in uh, public service media, especially in Czech radio, which I still would uh, consider uh, to be a very free uh, space um, in terms of uh, picking topics and uh, discussing films, also like minor uh, films, uh, documentary uh, films, and uh, also like um, putting uh, sometimes at least uh, blockbusters aside and doing something more art house, uh, let's say. Um, it's definitely not the case uh, for uh, like private sector and online media who follow pretty much what I described and what is probably uh, the trend. Uh, but um, yeah, there is uh, still uh, enough space to, to cover also uh, different, different aspects. If I can also follow up on what you said and what you said, thank you so much for um, uh, a documentary called Once Upon a Time in Poland uh, that was hilarious portrait of Polish um, pro approach to religion. I don't think anybody in Poland could uh, make a film like that. Uh, it was it was really really funny and very interesting. And uh, while I was listening to um, uh, to you talking about Hungary, I thought about one uh, film, very specific, Lessons of Love. It's about um, two women who uh, are together, and one of them, at some point they uh, left for Germany, but they have to come back because one of the women's younger brother needs uh, custody. And uh, the film was released only after he turned 18 and became legal. So that the fact that he's raised by a sister who's lesbian is not an issue. So that's, I think, uh, best comment on how the situation is like uh, in Poland. And the film won a Polish uh, films competition at uh, Millennium Ducks Against Gravity. So, and it was very popular and it's very sweet, sweet film. Um, as for my job, I actually, I feel I, I have, a, I'm very privileged because I'm a head of Polish section and in a magazine, a monthly magazine, so I get to pick actually films and um, for a year now I try to make sure that if there's an interesting documentary, uh, either released uh, in theaters or um, at festivals. There's the interview, for example, with a filmmaker because they have uh, very interesting things to say. And um, I uh, work with Martin at Cine Europa, which makes uh, everything much easier because Cine Europa supports actually uh, European films, also documentaries, as long as um, the audience is able to. Um, somehow watch the films outside of festivals. And um, I, I would say that uh, there are less and less uh, film journalists, but they are more and more dedicated to promoting um, precious small things. There's, there's obviously a lot of, uh, uh, I would say coverage. There's a lot of coverage of Netflix uh, the TV series because this is something people are interested. But uh, 
my colleagues uh, who work at um, radio or have their podcasts um, or blogs, uh, I can see that they are very interested also in the smaller films, I mean, non, non blockbuster films. I would maybe second what uh, Laurent said about the HBO when I was now thinking back. What I said sounded pretty optimistic about making documentaries in Slovakia, so <laughs> I, I don't want to make the false impression that you can just come into the country and make a fantastic documentaries, so it's hard as anywhere else, but uh, HBO changing mind and withdrawing support is like a major catastrophe, so we are also waiting to find out how this will affect the uh, audiovisual landscape and especially documentary filmmaking in the long run. So that was, you know, a low blow <laughs> from HBO. And uh, regarding the coverage, I mean, I'm doing most of my writing outside the country, so I'm not like a stable in uh, local journals. And uh, when I'm hired to do something, it's always for the art house or independent cinema. So because that's my specialty, so they didn't hire me for anything else. I don't personally follow any American blockbusters, honestly. Uh, no American production commercial. But I also think it's the same as the other countries. When you have left-leaning media, they are more prone to you know, support independent filmmaking or those controversial issues, and the right-winning media are more open to the global phenomenon. But anyway, it's very like precarized uh, field to work in, right? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, writing about films, being a filmmaker, uh, being a uh, like film journalist in all of our countries, it's uh, like not the easiest path uh, to earn money and a stable job and stuff like that, right? You can't buy an apartment from doing film journalism. I, I can say I'm also in a privileged position because I've been working for a, um, a political cultural weekly paper for many years, for many decades now, and I have absolute freedom uh, what I'm writing about. Uh, um, there is only one regulation I need to write uh, about uh, movies uh, distributed in, in Hungarian cinema, so... Uh, that's the reason why I, I can't uh, write uh, about so many Hungarian or other documentaries because uh, because uh, I, I, I didn't have chance to talk about the Hungarian situation in case of distribution of Hungarian documentaries in, in, in Hungarian cinemas. But actually, there are not so many uh, Hungarian documentaries distributed in, in cinema, and and I can write about uh, film festivals. And, and there are some cases when Hungarian documentaries are distributed in cinema that I, I write about them. But I have absolute freedom anyway. So I try to write about documentaries, of course. I would like to add um, a few things to what we already uh, talked about. Um, in, uh, I want to add um, something about the audience um, because what is also important, I don't know how about uh, um, how, how the situation looks like in your countries, but there are small um, art house cinemas and cultural centers that uh, show documentaries, not necessarily those that have... Uh, uh, regular um, theatrical release and they invite uh, filmmakers and um, audience is very interested in that sort of special screenings when uh, there's an attendance of the character who stars in a film so to speak or a, um, or a filmmaker who made it and they they love to talk about the documentaries at first they are shy like I think most uh, Eastern European uh, audience uh, is. And um, I want to say something about Polish public broadcaster. Um, years back, it was the, the major support. Um, it, it was giving a, a big support to uh, documentary films. It was something that uh, the producer could supp supplement the the budget because the Polish Film Institute can only give you as 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 much as 50% of the uh, of the budget of the film and uh, right now um, in in the current political situation po Polish uh, public television is um, is I would say a partner that nobody wants uh, but my understanding of the situation um, after I, I talked to a few 
documentary film producers is that uh, actually when they they um, have this like sort of supervised screening or test screening with uh, with the commissioning editors or editors at the at the television the, there's um, there's no pressure to change something or to make uh, if, if it's historical documentary it's not they, they are not pushed to uh, manipulate with the history so that it's more um, popular with the with the right wing party now. And um, what is concerning is that, uh, as probably in your country too, that the audience uh, uh, there is a significant uh, drop in uh, in audience in general. Um, before pandemic, uh, Polish films were getting i think 35 percent of admissions i think we were we in czech republic were the the two countries in our region that had a biggest uh, local audience on local film so to speak and now um the the big films are kind of getting the audience back but polish films not so much and also there's a slight change in the um, so-called distribution windows and that i uh, as the i i understand that that makes uh, difficult um that makes it difficult for the distributors and one more thing i um i was um informed that uh, mm, there is a bureaucracy when you're applying for uh for subsidy and you wait and wait and wait for actually uh, having the money in your budget, and that uh, makes production side um, a little more complicated. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to add. The support of Czech audience towards Czech films is like very stable, but the general admission is uh, lower now. And documentaries, that's the sector where the impact is the most mm -hmm. visible. Uh, to to be to be honest, otherwise uh, Czech television is still the key partner uh, everyone wants to work with um, among documentary uh, directors definitely. And here at the Hlava Film Festival, there would be out, I don't know like two thirds of the films wouldn't be here uh, without being backed by uh, Czech television uh, definitely. So that that are like my remarks on this. Do you think those audiences will come back? I mean, some people are saying, okay, like um, online platforms became much bigger during the pandemic and then people are simply not returning to the cinema or do you think in time? Um... I definitely think it um, it's gonna need time. It won't change in like course one year. Uh, and to have this things like stable or coming back, um, it would need uh, the like, complete situation calmed down, which uh, I refer uh, to the current situation in, in Ukraine. Uh, basically, I would say it might sound skeptical, but um, I would say there is uh, no more Visegrad 4 uh, now uh, because of the situation uh, with the Russian invasion. And all the following, like economical, financial problems, uh, are also very like visible on either box office or financing films for future release, or also the cooperation uh, between our countries. Because there is a lot of um, co-productions with uh, Polish uh, filmmakers going on, and of course uh, Slovak um, Slovak filmmakers. Basically, most of the festival successes of uh, Czech cinema are connected to some co-productions, Polish, Romanian, Slovak, and some more. Uh, not that much to say about Hungarian co-productions. I don't remember which was the last official Hungarian co-production. Uh, but yeah, to add the over, over, overview, skeptical tone, I would say like this format of Visegrad 4 is at least really shattered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as for the, just to, just a quick uh, comment on um, the audience uh, coming back to the cinemas. Well, 
in in Poland, the inflation rate is really high, and people have actually less 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 money. But then again, uh, there were almost five hundred thousand admissions to that documentary about late uh, Polish actress uh, Ania Przybylska, and uh, almost six hundred thousand on a feature film about the priest. Um, it's, it's, it was it was not actually a very religious film. It looked like uh, somebody from Czech Republic made it. Um, it was a, just a biopic of this uh, super famous, uh, very down to earth uh, priest. Um, so it seems like the audience is just very picky. Uh, if they and uh, I think they really need something uplifting now. And they are very, very uh, mindful of what kind of films they uh, go out and see and pay. I don't know. Um, I think the least, the cheapest um, ticket in Poland is uh, five euro. So that's that's a lot if you want to go with uh, your entire family. I mean, it was amazing seeing the cinemas here so full when it was a Czech documentary specifically. I think, but. Um, I guess that also relates to what you were saying, Ola, about like event cinema, and if there's event or festival around it, then that somehow makes a big difference, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, just maybe shortly, uh, this creating this at least illusion of event is like a key thing, like in media, in covering yeah. what you will cover, what you are basically also contributing, contributing to and making an event out of or like event like a festival here where like many of those sold out overcrowded uh, screenings are those of films who won't uh, get any uh, substantial uh, admissions or box, box office uh, during the distribution. That's like the heart to uh, we need to add as well. Mm -hmm. I would maybe second what Pavel said in his earlier entry <laughs> regarding the status of the cinema. Well. Let's face it, the uh, independent documentary cinema wasn't the main blockbuster anyway, you know, so that's the state of the situation as, as it was always. And uh, what also Ola said, to make it an event, this is like a really great wave. Uh, I believe it's called now audience design. There is like a role audience designer, so this is also a way to go to prepare these events. And I, I believe also in Czech Republic there was this uh, blockbuster documentary called In the Net, which I believe is like the um, case study on how to promote and push independent do do documentary, and they were quite successful. It's about online predators. It's not about anyone ah, famous, I saw but this, it's I think, it's yeah. it's about on. This was like half million admissions in the Czech Republic, uh, w which is which is like exceptional. Like um, there is uh, one like this in ten years to say so. This was premiered at Carla Vivari, I think. If I, uh, it's the same one, and it has also it had also like complicated distribution because of Corona lockdowns. Right. So basically, there was a huge. Um, event done out of this film, then Corona stopped it. They deci decided not to go online, they decided to wait. Mm -hmm. So it was like a very complicated year in terms of distributing all films, not just uh, this one, but this one succeeded in the end, really. Drive-in cinema. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Drive-in cinema started, uh, etc. But uh, in the end, I'm a bit skeptical about uh, like the real impact of uh, drive-in cinemas on, on the like general box, of box office. It was more like um, um, something special for for that uh, year and and certain hope in it that uh, we will prevail uh, even all this uh, stuff happening. So if you uh, return to the question of broadcasting in Hungary or in other countries, uh, I can say you are really lucky with your national broadcasters in Czech Republic or, or in uh, Poland as well, because actually Hungarian documentaries uh, have been suffering uh, from uh, the lack of, uh, of support of, uh, of national uh, broadcasters since, uh, since um, the system changed in, in 
89, actually. So that was a re really huge problem. And uh, and the uh, um, film policy, the new film act, didn't help uh, with, uh, with, the, with the support, with this uh, uh, missing support. Uh, uh, I, I was talking about uh, how National Film Institute uh, supports uh, um, f um, television documentaries. But uh, actually, uh, the filmmakers or the producers need to uh, have, uh, need to get uh, a permission from a broadcaster, a uh, um, national broadcaster. But actually the broadcaster uh, doesn't really care about the documentary. It's only a sign on a paper that, okay, we will, we will screen this uh, movie or this documentary if uh, you finish it. And they don't really care uh, about uh, the, qu the quality of the documentary. So there are no real commissioning editors in Hungarian uh, broadcasting uh, system, except HBO, but HBO was a different kind of uh, uh, TV, television channel. So th that's the real problem. So that's the reason why Hungarian audience uh, can't uh, see uh, Hungarian documentaries because, uh, okay, somebody, I don't know, a, a Hungarian a television channel write this paper, sign this paper that uh, they, will pub, they will screen the documentary sometimes, somewhere, but they usually uh, screen it, uh, I don't know, at noon or in the midnight, so in, a, in a crazy time, and they, they don't really have a, a PR campaign uh, uh, around uh, the documentary, so nobody cares with the documentary in, in television. And there are only a couple of uh, uh, documentaries, Hungarian documentaries, which are uh, distributed in cinemas. And, uh, and I, I mentioned Iron Lady, uh, about uh, this famous Hungarian uh, swimmer. Uh, and uh, only 20,000 uh, people went to cinema to watch this huge blockbuster movie about a huge star of uh, Hungarian uh, sport, uh, uh, sport life. Mm -hmm. So actually, Hungarian, Hungarian audience doesn't really care about documentaries except film festivals. So uh, there are some film festival, Verzio uh, Film Festival uh, will be high soon uh, in the early November, and I'm I'm sure that uh, that uh, uh, young people in Budapest will uh, will uh, go will attend this event. But uh, if you compare to the Hiawa Film Festival, it's 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 a very small event. I mean, there are only a couple of uh, of cinemas uh, which join uh, to this event, so a couple of uh, I don't know, a couple of hundreds uh, people can watch. Uh, 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 documentaries uh, at the same time, so we can't uh, say uh, we, we can't compare to Yichlova Film Festival. But, but I hope uh, that uh, that those people who are really interested in documentary uh, will uh, uh, attend this film festival this year because uh, the previous years uh, uh, this festival was uh, held online mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. Yeah. I have a question yeah. for you guys, actually, if you don't mind. Uh, do you have um, national VOD platforms with uh, documentaries or more independent or art house films? And do they know how popular they are? There are several platforms here in the Czech Republic also focused on like independent or documentary cinema, uh, one of them is definitely Da Films, that is based here in the Czech Republic, but uh, focused on cooperation like throughout Europe, but it's predominantly uh, focused on documentaries, not only, but uh, mainly documentaries. And besides that, um, this year, Quiff TV started, which is an um, online streamer, um, really close to Karlo Vivari Film Festival, that's why it's called uh, Quiff TV. Releasing also documentaries, but the main focus is in, in uh, fiction films. And then there are like several more, but uh, uh, rather like low players. Uh, the main are the international, of course. I can just echo what Pavel said because we share these platforms and the films is like hands down the best so far. I use it frequently for my work. So I, I use it too. It's good and it seems to have quite a good reach actually, I think. 
Maybe it also Film Europe has its own Edison Online, which yeah, it's called Edison Online. Yes, some do documentaries which are on yeah, in the catalog. Well. Yeah, I, I think we might generally say that in the situation which we are in now, uh, we are like lucky for any kind of like this infrastructure. Let's call it this way that already established before pandemics. Uh, before Russian invasion, because mm, before like current economical problems, that uh, is like stable enough to um, to stay to endure uh, in in this uh, situation. For so anywhere there is like stable uh, public broadcaster, anywhere there is like uh, this uh, kind of um, independent uh, films oriented uh, uh, streamer or state funding or uh, any other kind of infrastructure like like this we are so happy about it yeah but to answer your question yes uh, there are some uh, vod p platforms in hungary F national film institute uh, launched a uh, uh, um, vod platform for hungarian films hungarian feature films uh, old feature films and, and the new ones as well, and documentaries also. So you can see, you can watch Hungarian documentaries on Filmio. And, and Cinego is also a, 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 plat a VOD platform for cinemas, for independent cinemas, not only Hungarian, but uh, Hungarian as well. So there is a chance to watch Hungarian cinemas. And HBO and Netflix also work for for Hungarian documentaries, they, they are also open for Hungarian documentaries, and it's so important. I'm sure that more people uh, could watch Hungarian documentaries on HBO or, and Netflix than in cinema. What about Poland? Yeah. Yes, um, pretty much similar. Uh, there are s few smaller VOD platforms. Uh, some of them are sort of subsidies of uh, film festivals like New Horizon Film Festival or Millennium Ducks Against Gravity. There is um, um, this public production company that uh, just made uh, their old films available and uh, there's not a lot of documentaries but they're short Reels. I, I don't uh, know what's the correct term. Help me out, Carmen. The the short uh, news news reels that were at some point presented before the actual film. Yeah. So that's a pretty nice archive. And the national Polish National Archive also has uh, their own um, VOD platform called Ninateka. But uh, the the library is uh, is very small. Actually, I think. From my perspective, what is challenge right now is uh, uh, the distribution rights on VOD. Um, well, VOD, the distribution rights. Uh, the the films are traveling around these platforms, and uh, I can see that some platforms uh, expand their library, and some have to shrink it, uh, but definitely um, what um, what was interesting during pandemic was that uh, art house film, uh, art house cinemas association op opened their own platform and part of the um, ticket price went to um, local art house cinemas. So you can actually uh, watch the film, pay for the ticket, and pick which uh, cinema is going to get some of the money for the ticket you bought. Okay, um, we're coming to the end of the time here. We've just got five minutes. So we talked about, I mean, almost like a kind of a perfect storm of pressures, I think, with like the Russian, full-scale Russian invasion and um, the pandemic, everything else. Um, any comments about the future, a um, few years coming up from any of you? I don't know, but I, I, I feel really sad. I mean, uh, you mentioned that uh, Visegrad uh, found uh, ceased to be exist, and I, I'm afraid 
uh, you are right. I mean, Visegrand uh, uh, V4 seems to be exist uh, because of the Russian inv invasion and uh, Hungary supports Putin and its uh, politics and Russian invasion actually. And that's, that's the reason behind, uh, behind uh, the f uh, this uh, good initiation uh, will f uh, fall apart. And, uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm, I, I'm afraid that uh, the state uh, field fund uh, can't have uh, so much money to support Hungarian films, so the, the future is not so bright. I share your ideas that, that, uh, that I, I don't know how much money will go to Hungarian films and Hungarian documentaries in the future, but if we compare that, that now, I don't know, a couple of hundred uh, uh, millions of foreign went to documentaries and only a, a handful of documentaries which uh, had uh, social issues or socially critical uh, topics uh, uh, were supported that I can't, uh, I, I, I can't imagine how many will be supported. I mean, really uh, interesting, exciting topics uh, will be supported in the future. Yeah. That's all right. I would say at least my hope is that future is female in Slovakian documentary because there is this uh, young generation of uh, female documentary filmmakers and producers, which I, I failed to mention earlier. So there are also a lot of young, very, you know, uh, ambitious uh, female producers which are ready to fight and struggle for the funds and keep finishing the project. So my hopes are, or bets are at, at this stake. So. Great. Yes, definitely. Uh, gender equality is uh, something uh, the industry is talking about in Poland. Also, um, sustain sustainability. Carmen, help me out again. Yes, sustainability. Um, yes, um, that's uh, definitely more among uh, feature films where you can uh, make um, some green changes. Uh, as for the um, Polish Film Institute. Uh, Grants. I think the situation is pretty transparent and stable because the budget of the Polish Film Institute comes from um, broadcasters, uh, VOD platforms, and uh, every year we pretty much know how much money the institute got, and every year they um, announce how much money they have uh, for uh, support and um, we also have documentary development programs more and more workshop um, and I think the documentary is something people are just interested in because people will always 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 be interested in uh, seeing the world through other people's eyes and share their view of um, of the world and uh, ecolo uh, environmental issues are important also in uh, among uh, filmmakers in Poland. And uh, I hope that one minute, 45 seconds is enough for you. <laughs> well, I do have my worries about um, what is going to be next uh, in, 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 in few upcoming years, but uh, I don't wanna end up on this note. So uh, I think it might be um, a time of certain like shrinking uh, of funds and maybe possibilities and so on, but it's like a temporary shrinking for, a, let's say, a, a decade, and then we could meet here again, and there will be uh, no Putin, no, no Orban, and no, uh, and no financial Polish government. Price. <laughs> yeah, you can add each nation, we can add something specific uh, to, to it. Uh, so uh, we can meet uh, here like in, in 10 years and uh, this uh, shrinking period will be over uh, because like uh, the bright minds uh, will not shrink and, and will uh, continue. Okay, this is a very nice sentiment to end on. I'd just like to thank uh, all of you again for your thoughts. It's been really interesting. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks a lot.